Greetings and welcome to Pinball Help. Mike here. Uh, this is part three of a short little series idea I'm doing working on a Bally 35 Mystic pinball machine. And the problem that we had with this is the center drop target bank was not resetting. This thing would not start up. Um, in the first two series uh, of videos, I showed how to diagnose and track down where the problem was. And um, we found out that one of the transistors here was uh, broken off. Now, maybe it had blown and I didn't remember it, but uh, I replaced it and, and then the coil locked on, so I knew there was a problem. And so we traced it to the pre-driver transistor for this, which is up here in the back box on the driver board. It's in a chip. It's a CA3081, which is a 16-pin integrated circuit that has an array of, I think, seven uh, or, or so um, transistors in it or something like that. And um, I do have the CA3081. I managed to have one of those on, but, but it, it, the, the integrated circuit is actually um, soldered right onto the board. So I'd have to desolder it, then put a socket in, and then put the thing. Now this transistor array chip is pretty expensive. If you can find them, they're like five bucks or, or more for the chip. But there's a trick where you can basically hack a regular transistor into where the one is blown. And I decided, hey, let's try this. Why not? Um, because you can use a little 2N4401 transistor in, in replace of where the one is blown in the chip, and those things are just like two cents a piece. So this is a little hack, and uh, let me show you. Let me show you what I did. It's, it's not pretty. <laughs> But uh, it actually does work, and I'll show you. So let's zoom in over here to the area of the board that we're talking about. And um, you'll see um, this, is the, this is the driver transistor for the coil in question that wouldn't fire. This is the pre-driver thing. And you'll see I've got a transistor here that is kind of jacked into the, uh, this thing. So I've taken a 2N4401, and I have cut the two pins for the uh, collector and base, and then I've soldered uh, the 2N4401's collector and base to these two pins, and then the emitter goes to the ground on the chip, one, which, and this is a pin 15. Now, um, I originally had this actually flipped the other way around. This is one of those things, whenever you're working with components, look up the data sheet. Uh, don't just assume that the collector is here and the emitter is here because it, it's, it's different on every type of transistor I've found. At least it can be. So you always want to double check it. So I, I originally had this thing flipped the other way around and it wasn't working. Um, so, I, so then I pulled the data sheet. And I did pull the data sheet on the CA3081 so I could find out where the transistors were. What I didn't do was I didn't pull a data sheet on the 2N4401. Should have done both of them, made sure they all lined up. I finally did that, and it got, it's working fine. So what I've done is I've jacked a transistor into this array. It's ugly. It's uh, the kind of thing an operator might do on location, but it does work. And I just wanted to see if I could do it. Um, if I was uh, really restoring this game, I would obviously completely pull this chip out, put a socket in there, and drop one of those CA 3081s But in this case, I believe... The only pre-driver transistor that's used in this chip is that just that one. So I don't even really need to replace the whole chip. I don't need any of the other driver transistors, uh, pre-drivers. I just needed this one. So I just jacked it in. I've got a little wire here going over to the ground, and these two are tied in. Now, there is a uh, board that, that uh, a company, the NVRAM people do, that they've taken a little circuit board that has all the array of these things and so you can use that to replace it and those are only about two dollars to replace a chip with a little daughter board that has these individual um, pre-driver transistors mounted into them. Obviously the problem with this is if one if, if uh, a coil locks on and it blows the, the, um, the main driver it's likely going to blow the pre-driver but if that happens you have to replace this whole chip so you have to replace the whole thing for like you know, five or six different solenoids when they make, when you know, only one of them is blown. That's why on a lot of modern 
stuff there there you know a lot of other boards have individual pre-drivers although this is probably a little bit cheaper to produce it's a little bit more difficult to service um, so in, but in this case we can jack in a little transistor and it does work so let me show you it's uh it was a little two cent solution i didn't even have to remove the board from the uh back box so let's turn it on and you will see that when it boots up, it'll reset the center drop target, which is what it was not doing before. And there we go. We've got a few little lights out, a few other things to fiddle with. Um, but it is working, and you can see the... Uh, so when the drop targets get knocked down, they're resetting. That is fixed. We'll put that on the done list and um, take it from there. I've got LEDs in this and you can see they, they, they strobe a bit. So I may want to, um, in a future video, I may do something about showing how to address, if you want to put LEDs in some of these valley games, there's some tricks to keep them from strobing like that. But uh, So there we have it. Finally fixed it. Took three separate little parts. It, at first it thought, I thought it was going to be really simple and then it ended up being more complicated and then I was like, oh god, I do not want to have to pull that whole board and desolder that IC and a little bit of research and I found that there was an easier way to just hack a little transistor into it. Not pretty, but functional. So there's always multiple ways of doing things. I'm not necessarily saying this is the best way, but it does work and it'll be just as reliable as uh, anything else, and it was definitely a cheaper fix. If this was a, you know, this is an old beat up board, it's got a lot of damage on it, so I'm not gonna spend a ton of time trying to make it perfect, but it's working, the game plays great, and it's, there you have it. So uh, there's always a, some, a solution to do these things, and um, I wanna thank everybody for watching. For more, visit pinballhelp.com.